One Zambia, One Nation. It's 18 hours on TV2. Thank you so much for joining us on the news. These are the headlines. The Constitutional Court that is hearing the presidential election petition is expected to conclude before midnight. About 8,000 students at the University of Zambia Great East Road main campus will not write their exam examinations slated for Monday, September 5th, 2016. The Zambia Sports Fans Association has appealed to the nation and all football supporters to turn up in large numbers and support the national team as it takes on Kenya in the final leg of the 2017 AFCON qualifiers. With the news in detail, my name is Joy. Toby. The Constitutional Court has thrown out an application by the UPND seeking for the extension of time in which the presidential petition should be heard. The court ruled that the Constitution is very clear that the presidential petition must be heard within 14 days and that 14 days ends at midnight. TV2's Hector Sinfukwe reports that the court was addressing a fresh application which was made to the full bench by the UPND after a single judge dismissed the earlier application. Another application that was thrown out was by the UPND, which demanded that a single judge who denied them an application for extension of time should not be part of the bench. But the full bench of the Constitutional Court ruled that a single judge was very much in order to be part of the full bench because what the UPND presented was a fresh motion and not an appeal. And the Constitutional Court has also dismissed an application by the UPND for ZNBC and the Electoral Commission of Zambia ECZ to be compelled to produce materials such as news bulletins and election recordings. Judge Palan Mulonda said the petitioners were demanding for things that they did not ask for in the earlier meeting that they had with other parties to look at the materials. Judge Mulonda read the ruling on behalf of the full bench. Meanwhile, the respondents' lawyers have urged the court to throw out an application by the Law Association of Zambia to join the proceedings. Respondents' lawyer, Tutu Angolube, said Lars had no capacity to be an independent observer in the matter because they observed the election and brought the case of ministers to court, which is part of the subject matter of the petition. The court is yet to render a ruling on whether or not Lars would join the proceedings. The court will also make two rulings on whether it will allow the UPND to amend their petition as well as present another list of witnesses. Trial in the matter has not yet started. The UPND has petitioned the election of the patriotic France Ed Galungu as winner of the August 11th general election. And still on court news, the Lusaka High Court has dismissed an appeal against the decisions of the Board of the Independent Broadcasting Authority, IBA, to suspend the broadcasting licenses for movie television and company radio. Lusaka High Court Judge Mwende Siavwapa has ruled that the appeal to the court against the IBA board to suspend the licenses for the appellants is misconceived and incompetent. Judge Siavwapa has ruled that the application for an order of mandatory injunction is ill-fated for the reason that it does not constitute a standalone cause of action. He has also ruled that the appellants simply used the wrong procedure to try and challenge the IBA board decision. Judge Siavwapa, who held that in the context of Section 31, subsection 1 of the IBA Act, a person aggrieved by a decision of the board has a choice to appeal to the minister or not to appeal at all. He noted that the choice to appeal does not extend to the courts. Judge Siavwapa has upheld the preliminary objection and dismissed the whole appeal and the interlocutory application. On 22nd August 2016, the IBA suspended movie television, company and Iteji Teji radio in accordance with section 29, subsection 1 of the Independent Broadcasting Authority Amendment Act No. 26 of 2010. The Act provides that the, I, the board of the IBA may cancel broadcasting license if the cancellation of the license is necessary in the interest of public safety, security, 
peace, welfare, or good order. This is contained in a statement issued to TV2 News by IBA Director General and Board Secretary Josephine Mapoma. Now, about 8,000 students at the University of Zambia Great East Road main campus will not write their examinations slated for Monday, September 5, 2016. The affected students have allegedly not paid tuition fees, hence have been barred from writing their examinations. University of Zambia Students Union Nzaso President John Zmwewa disclosed that 16,000 students will sit for their final examinations next Monday. Mr. Zmwewa said the institution has a total of 24,000 students, and out of that number, 8,000 will not sit for their examinations. He said in a telephone interview with Zanis in Lusaka today that the union and UNSA management yesterday held a meeting where the union requested management to allow students who owe the institution money to sit for their examinations, but their request failed. Meanwhile, one of the affected students, Mwape Nondolwelo, told TV2 News that management should consider allowing the students to write their exams and withhold their results. And Felinda Chileshe has urged management to consider the plight of the affected students. I am a person who works and I failed to pay because of other challenges we have, orphans, orphans, other people. So we are just appealing to the, to the government, our listening government. They just convene, intervene with the, with the management. Just take a call to call them so that we can write. They hold our results. A good number of students, uh, we can anticipate maybe 2,000 plus, we are affected because we've not uh, managed to clear our balances or to register the courses. Then management has started uh, not to, uh, those who have not registered to sit for the exams. We've tried to appeal, writing letters, and liaise with uh, the union so that they can uh, represent us. But from the look of things, uh, they have failed. So we are appealing to the government to intervene in the matter because uh, we are just remaining with some few months. And it's not our fault. And uh, some of us, we are orphans. But Ministry of Higher Education Permanent Secretary Owen Mugemezulu confirmed in a separate interview of having received the reports on bad students who would not sit for their examinations. Mr. Mugemezulu says his ministry has no powers to compel or command UNSA management to allow the students to sit for their exams. The Permanent Secretary, however, assured that government would look into the students' matter soon. Government has secured 38.2 million U.S. dollars for the improvement of water and sanitation facilities in all the 16 districts in Western Province. Local Government Permanent Secretary Emos Malopenga says the money, which has been partly funded by, AI, by ADB and OPEC Fund, will, among other things, be used to construct more than 1,400 water points. Mr. Malopenga said this in a speech read on his behalf by Western Province Permanent Secretary Mwangala Liomba during a handover ceremony of ICT equipment to all the 16 districts of Western Province. More in this report. It's about 07.40 a.m. in the morning in Kapulanga compound in Mongo district. Most households here start their day with morning chores. But majority of these households do not have water within the boundaries of their compounds. Memory Mubiana, 18, is one of the thousands of residents who move long distances in search of water for daily use. By the time I go to school, I have to go running out looking for water. So by the time I go to school, I'm already tired. So the government has to bring water to this place so that I can find enough time to, to, to do my school work. Hopefully, this could be the last time that memory is lamenting about water challenges in our area. Water challenges in all the 16 districts of Western Province will soon be washed away. This is because government has secured over 38.2 million US dollars for the improvement of water and sanitation in Western Province. These funds, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, will be used on the following. One, construction of 10 solar powered water reticulation schemes for rural areas and growth points. Two, Rehabilitation of 1,243 dysfunctional water points. 
Three, construction of 1,481 new water points equipped with hand pumps. And four, construction of 150 manually drilled boreholes. And five, construction of 916 sanitation facilities in public institutions. Six, program management that will include the capacity building. And last but not the least, sector development. And the Ministry of Local Government Director Engineering, Nkumbo Siyami, says the project will help uplift the living standards of the people of Western Province. This will have a trickle-down effect of ensuring that the people are safe, or they drink uh, safe uh, water, and we minimize the instances of uh, diarrhea or diseases. So this will go a wrong way in ensuring that uh, we don't have cases of uh, diseases which tend to be a big draw on the government. The Western Water and Storage Company also says once the project is complete, water supply in the province will be 18 to 24 hours a day. This will bring about uh, an improvement in all the towns to about 18 hours to 24 hours of water supply uh, in the urban areas. The three-year project is expected to improve the living standards of the people in the province. Masao Som Kwayaya, ZNBC News, Mongo, Western Province. Thank you, Masao, also for that report. In other news, the Zambia Medicines Regulatory Authority, Zamra, has seized assorted skin lightening cosmetics from a named shop in Lusaka's Kamwala trading area. The association has also seized various clinical creams meant for treatment but are instead being abused for skin bleaching. Zamra Inspector Osborne Kamwale says the raid follows an investigation conducted that revealed that some traders are still selling the banned products. Here's a report. Security is very tight as several carton boxes of creams illegally on the market are being taken away. A combined team of officers from the Zambia Medicines Regulatory Authority, ZAMRA, and the Drug Enforcement Commission, DEC, have seized the goods. These skin bleaching creams illegally find their way on the Zambian market. Also seized are assorted clinical creams that are supposed to be used under strict medical supervision. According to the specifications on this packaging, this beta so cream is meant to be used for treatment of inflammations and allergies. But this cream mostly found in several shops within Lusaka and this one in particular is being used as skin lightening. But this is something that Zamra is against. The officers here acting under strict investigation revelations are convinced that this man has more goods hidden in a secret place. Allegations to which 52-year-old Albert Kapinga, the owner of the shops, denies. But up this staircase in an isolated room, the allegations turn out to be a fact. Uh, this raid is all about one protecting the public in terms of uh, these uh, products that were recently banned by Zamra, Zambia Medicine Regulatory Authority, due to their abuse. Uh, some of them, to them, the as you can see, uh, there is uh, diprosone, there is betasol, then there is epidem cream and lotions. These products were initially registered, but Zamra had to suspend their market authorization, meaning registration, because they were noted to be abused, greatly abused by specifically the women of Zambia to lighten their skin. So they were being abused for the side effects, not for the intended therapeutic use, which is to treat certain conditions which were to be diagnosed in medical, public health institutions. The law is expected to take its course in this matter. Lufola Nkawani, TV2 News, in Osaka. The Zambia Association of Manufacturers, ZAM, says it is targeting to hit 250,000 metric tons of iron before the end of this year. 
Zam president Brad Chunga said his company is currently producing 12,000 metric tons per month of iron and steel at its Sange Hill mine in Nampundwe area in Shibuyunji district of Lusaka province. Dr. Chunga disclosed that the company is exporting the iron and steel to neighboring countries like Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mozambique, Rwanda, South Africa and Zimbabwe. He was speaking in an interview with Zanis in Lusaka today. Dr. Chunga further said that Zambia is a good place for conducting business because of the flourishing fiscal economic policies set by government. He disclosed that iron ore mining has proven to be sustaining because the association in particular has proven to be sustaining the association in particular and the nation at large. This is TV2 News at 18 hours. Just now we take a break. Join us for more stories on the other side. Welcome back. Zambia Open University Acting Vice-Chancellor Olusegun Yerokun has challenged the institution's eighth graduating class to fight corruption in their respective careers. Professor Yerokun says the poverty vice can only be overcome when people who have high integrity and morals are courageous enough to question social ills and injustices. Speaking during the ceremony themed truth, courage and integrity, Professor Yerokun said the knowledge gained by the students must not only be used to benefit individuals but the society at large. And University Chancellor Professor Francis Yamba has encouraged the graduates to be ambassadors of positive social change. Here's a report. <laughs> The Zambia Open University's 8th graduation ceremony had all the makings of an occasion to remember. With gift cards lining the passageways, photographers coaxing potential customers, and of course the presence of distinguished ladies and gentlemen to seal the deal. Notable among those present here were former President Rupia Banda and his spouse, whose appearance caused an exciting ripple of acknowledgement through the crowds gathered. With a total number of 996 candidates graduating, the Zambia Open University's acting vice chancellor took the chance to give an important message. As people who have had the privilege of higher education, it is our obligation to speak the truth. When those in power, those who wield economic and political power, need to be reminded of their responsibilities and be challenged for looting public resources and unethical and immoral conduct, we must be in the forefront. It is a transition that can be done when one thinks about the many problems that confront your present world. This includes unemployment, poverty, social justice, corruption, strife, among others. But my dear graduates, you can change it all. That is what this graduation ceremony is all about. But also trekking to the graduation ceremony, away from the families and friends of those graduating, were those with an eye for business. It is a time for merrymaking for many people who are graduating from this university. But for some, it's a time to make money. I want to speak to Alfred about this. So in a day like this one, how much do you roughly make? Let's say by the end of today, how much do you hope to make from selling these goods that you have? Um, Across to... 2000. Uh, the business is fine. As you can see, we are doing photography here. Uh, somebody hired me to do the, the filming. Many who own gift shops brought the shop to the customer. This year's graduation ceremony was held under the theme Truth, Courage and Integrity. Penopsikazwe, TV2 News, Lusaka. To Senanga now, where rice traders in the district are calling for the regulation of the price of paddy rice. The traders are also appealing to the local authorities to designate a decent market area specifically for rice traders in the district. Mary Mwekisa has more in this report. A drive into Mongu, Kalabo or Senanga districts of Western Province compels you to buy the famously tasty Mongu rice among other products. In a province well known for producing arguably the best rice in the country, it is no wonder the trading of Mongo rice is on the rise. Debbie Walumoya has been selling rice for the past 15 years. 
Ntuwe eti sakuru weze, kakuli kona business, uluko na kukona ngeru, na katiru na basani. Enyi. Kakuli kwa likolo, aluskaya, chewe kona luitu saze za, za kupimu sanga turaiso na chwalo. Enyi. Kashia kufaa, kwa foruki enisa ya nivana varuna, enyi kumakuma likolo. Apart from the income the business generates for her daily needs, she feels there must be a decent market designated to rice traders in Senanga, unlike the current trend which lacks order. Kaku moroko kaku yikupela, kambiga na kaku pa kuli neke ba kansu, na aso wana kuru weza kuli kao feralu na babari kisa raisi, na aso wana kuli na kuru kurukumu. This reporter queried the high pricing to which Debbie attributes to the price hike in paddy rice by the farmers, an area she feels should be regulated. Manzen wana kuba niyo na nene mtawe wakuli kambeba limi na wakako wana kululonge na ngwate na ima 50 kg ya tiz exactly. Kufita ma 35 ya wasa yukululi kisa. Kona mwana kwa niti kwa ya pahama. Kuluna vaideka. A delicacy like mongo rice, regardless of the pricing, leaves my crew no option than buy some for our long trip back to Lusaka. Mary Kasoka Mwekisa, ZNBC Business News, Senanga, Western Province. President Ed Galungu has delegated former President Rupia Banda to represent him at this year's Okusefia Pangwena traditional ceremony of the Bemba people built for Mungui district. The former president and his delegation will arrive in Kasama tomorrow and later proceed to Mungui for the ceremony. Special Assistant to the President for Press and Public Relations, Emos Chanda, has confirmed this to ZNBC News. And Northern Province Police Commissioner, Bonnie Capeso, says adequate security measures have been put in place ahead of tomorrow's Okusefia Pangwena traditional ceremony of the Bemba people. Mr. Capeso says police officers are on ground to maintain law and order during and after the ceremony. He has told ZNBC News in an interview that police officers from the general duties and traffic sections have been deployed to maintain law and order. And Mr. Capeso is happy that the northern region has been calm in the post-election period. He however said people bent on breaking the law during the ceremony will be dealt with regardless of their status in society. Meanwhile, the Road Transport and Safety Agency, RATSA, says it has deployed enough officers to ensure road safety during and after the traditional ceremony. RATSA Public Relations Manager, Mukela Mangolwa, has told ZNBC's Kenny Diwalia in Kasama that his officers are also raising awareness on road safety. Mr. Mangolwa said drink driving and unnecessary excitement on the road will attract serious penalties. We take another break. Coming up after that is foreign and sports news. Keep watching. We continue with the news. In foreign news, a Kenyan MP has asked the country's parliament to pass a law to recognize a third gender to end discrimination against those who identify as intersex. Isaac Mwaura is also asking for funding for gender alignment surgery and a public awareness campaign to end stigma against intersex people. Intersex are people whose sex is neither completely male nor female. In sports news, the Zambia Sports Fans Association has appealed to the nation and all football supporters to turn up in large numbers and support the national team as it takes on Kenya in the final leg of the 2017 AFCON qualifiers. Association President Peter Makembo says Sunday's AFCON qualifier is a formality game but also important as the performance of the team will be gauged and can determine the team's performance in other games. Makembo says the team can still improve and poor performance does not mean it is the end of the team. Here is a report. Football fans are the 12th players of any football game and a stadium without fans would never be complete. Zambia will on Sunday host Kenya in a dead rubber final group E, Africa Cup of Nations qualifier at Levi Mwanawasa Stadium and various football fans in Lusaka have pledged to continue supporting the national team. This is despite not qualifying to the 2017 Gabon Africa Cup of Nations showpiece. For sure we're going to watch to be a good game, although it's, a, it's like a formality, but we need to, uh, to gain some more points from ah, I love Zambia so much. I'm a Masoka fan to the fullest. I've been like supporting Zambia national team for like, I think, uh, 
And Zambia Sports Fans Association President Peter Makembo explains the importance of the game against Kenya. That team, it has come wounded, knowing fully to say we carried the victory on our soil. So, to us, we know what it means when it comes in a return game. To us fans, we are going to move in massive, as usual. The assurance to, to the team is that we are going there, we are already oiled up our machinery brass band to move there in full force, so the players should not even think of lacking anything in terms of support. Zambia, who are third in Group E, on six points, are out of the 2017 AFCON, being hosted by Gabon. Etambuyu Katota, ZNBC Sports, Lusaka. Zambia will on Sunday, 4th September, play Kenya in a final Group E fixture of the 2017 AFCON qualifiers. And as we end the news, here are the headlines once again. The Constitutional Court that is hearing the presidential election petition is expected to conclude before midnight. The United Party for National Development, UPND, has petitioned the election of the Patriotic Front's Edgar Lungu as president in the August 11th general election. About 8,000 students at the University of Zambia Great East Road main campus will not write their examinations slated for Monday, September 5, 2016. The affected students have allegedly not paid tuition fees, hence have been barred from writing the examinations. And lastly, the Zambia Sports Fans Association has appealed to the nation and all football supporters to turn up in large numbers and support the national team as it takes on Kenya in the final leg of the 2017 AFCON qualifiers. Association patron Peter Makembo says Sunday's AFCON qualifier is a formality but also important as the performance of the team will be gauged and can determine the team's performance in other games. Thank you so much for your time. Our next news update on TV2 will be at 20 hours tonight. I'm Joyce Yatobi. Stay blessed.